ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Faster, boy, faster! From a distance, the tiny wooden houses of Placerville looked like toys, tumbled together in the generous lap of Old Woman Mountain. They seemed to cling to the hillside in desperation, as if they were afraid the old woman would suddenly stand up and spill her toys into the valley below. The largest building in Placerville housed the Eagle Mining Syndicate. And it was here that Craig Marshall, the payroll clerk, stopped working long enough to argue with a very pretty young woman who had just ridden up to the doorway. I wish you wouldn't do it, Lucy. It's dangerous for a girl to be riding around these trails alone. Oh, nonsense, Craig. I spend the whole day cooped up being a schoolteacher. I need the exercise. So does my pony. I know you do, Lucy. But there have been so many robberies lately, and... and... Oh, what's the use of talking? You'll go anyway. But I appreciate you worrying about me. Really, I do. I'll be back before sundown. Please be careful, Lucy. Of course, darling. I'll see you later. All right, pony. Get up there. The Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan approached Old Woman Mountain by a trail from the east. As they reached a small clearing, the masked man noticed several cardboard placards placed on an old tree trunk. He reined up sharply. Oh, Silver, who are you? Oh, 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 wait a minute. Let's look at the sign that's tacked on that tree over there. Come on, boy. Why, it's... Uh, what sign say? Very interesting, Tonto. $5,000 reward for the capture of an outlaw known as the Lone Ranger. He rides a white horse, wears a mask, and generally travels with an Indian. For further information, see the undersigned, Sam Pendleton, Sheriff of Placer County. Why, it means you. Yes, Dan, that's quite obvious. The question is, why? We not ride this way for many moons. I don't know Sheriff Pendleton or this part of the country. The description of me is accurate enough to... What's that? It's a woman. Come on. Oh, oh, silver. Hold on. Let's go. Let's go. Easy. I'll wait here with the horses, Dan. Come on, Tato. Uh huh. Me come. Let me go. Now listen, Let sister. Me just go. calm down. All you have to do is keep quiet. You won't get hurt. Yeah. 
Can we have a talk with that fella of yours and you'll be back in town as good as new? If you think you're going to use me to make Craig give you, you the might company... Might as well slug her, Fletcher. We can't handle no yapping female like this. I'll just tap her with the barrel of this... I don't picture. think you will. Drop that gun and put up your hands. Hey, what the... An hombre with a mask. Ah! Oh, my hand! Yeah, stop beefing. He just shot our guns away. Come on, let's get to the horses. Come on. Are you hurt? I'm only scared, and that'll wear off. Well, I got away. Hey, hey, I couldn't on, shoot again because you were directly in the line of fire. Oh, I'm glad you didn't. Do you know who those men were? No, they had handkerchiefs over their faces. They just overtook me here on the trail and tried to... Oh. Oh, what's wrong? You're, you're wearing a mask, too. Oh, excuse me. For the moment, I forgot about it. It's black, and there's an Indian standing right behind you. Why, you must be the, the Lone Ranger. I uh, noticed a placard back there on the tree. An outlaw. Well, regardless of what you do for a living, I'm very grateful for your help. I wish I'd arrived sooner. Do you know what those men wanted? Oh, yes, they were quite definite about that. They intended to hold me for ransom. Your father would pay No, the... Craig Marshall, the man I'm going to marry. He's the payroll clerk for the Eagle Mining Company. The ransom would have been the combination to the company's safe. Oh, I see. If the situation weren't so serious, it would be funny. Oh, do you think so? I'm waylaid by two outlaws and rescued by another one. Then I'm foolish enough to tell you all about Craig and the safe. Don't worry. I'm not an outlaw. But those reward notices... Well, you answer the description perfectly. I'm just as curious about that as you are. Oh, uh, by the way, you live in Placerville? I teach school there. I think it would be best if my friend and I ride home with you. The men who tried to kidnap Aren't you, you might... are you afraid to be seen in town? No. <laughs> not that Craig or I would say anything. I'm very grateful to you. I don't care who you are. Thanks. Shall we go? Have there been a number of crimes around here lately? Several robberies and holdups. All done by a man wearing a black mask. I see. Now, these are my friends. Tonto and Dan. I don't believe I know your name. Lucy Borden. I'm very glad to know you, ma'am. Oh. Thank you. Here, Silver. Dan, Tonto and I will ride into Placerville with Miss Borden. Can you find your way back to our camp? Steady, Silver. Which way do I go? Take this right-hand trail. And backtrack for about five miles. Do you think you can do it and wait for us there? Sure. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Borden. Goodbye, Dan. All right, Victor. Come on, boy. What a nice youngster. Yes, I think so. Well, shall we head for town? Of course. <coughs> Get him up, scum. Come on, Silver. Get up there. The Lone Ranger, Tonto, Dan, and Lucy Borden had hardly started on their way to Placer City when the masked man signaled for a halt. The little party drew up their mounts to hear what they had to say. He explained to Lucy that this territory was foreign to him, that he was unfamiliar with these rocky passes and their hidden trails. The pretty girl smiled at the tall, lean man and the Indian, asking for help. Without another word, she took command of the party and led them straight to the mining town. I'm going to stop here. Who? Oh, oh, boy. Oh, 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 this is the office of the mining company where Craig works. Won't you come in and meet him? Well, uh, yes, I'd like to. Tonto, uh, you better take a look around. Ah, uh, me look. <coughs> I'm sure you don't have to worry. The sheriff's office is at the other end of town. And you big fella. Well, it's always best to be on the safe side. Kimasabi, me look through window. Two fella inside, one young, one old. Oh, that's Craig and Mr. Thayer. He's the stamping mill foreman. A good friend of Craig's. It's all right. All right, come on, Dotto. Ah. Lucy. Craig, I want you to meet... Oh, mask man. Who are you? Don't worry, darling. He just saved my life. This is Craig Marshall, and the gentleman over there is Mr. Thayer. Howdy. You sure gave me a start busting in like this. Lucy, what do you mean he saved your life? Two men tried to kidnap me, and he frightened them away. Oh, Thank you for helping her. Thanks a lot. I was glad to do it. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to run along to dinner. I thank you too, stranger. We think a lot of Lucy here in town. Oh, Mr. Thayer, don't say anything about... Uh, well, maybe this gentleman wouldn't want to know. I understand, Craig. I won't say a word. Did you say he's the foreman at the stamping mill? That's right. Now, if there's some way I can repay you for helping Lucy... Yes, I... you can. Miss Borden tells me the men who tried to kidnap her wanted the combination to that safe over there. Why? 
I suppose it's because there's over $50,000 in cash there. The month's payroll. I see. Will you take a suggestion on how to protect it? Uh, what is it? I'll take the money out, hide it someplace. Oh, wait, and then... wait. Why are you telling me all this? Because somebody has been impersonating me, committing crimes in my name. I want to find out who it is. The office of Sam Pendleton, the sheriff of Placer County, was in a small frame building at the end of Placerville's main street. The sheriff was a conscientious, hard-working lawman who was not easily excited. Consequently, he hadn't been unduly concerned when Mr. Thayer, the foreman of the Eagle Mining Company, had rushed into his office a few moments before. I tell you, Sheriff, it's true. I just came from there. There's a masked man and an engine talking to Craig Gunn at the mine office. You're a loco. That lone ranger outlaw wouldn't have enough nerve to come right in town like this. I tell you, he's down there now. Get a posse together and you can get them both, the masked man and the engine. And don't forget... I'd lay in claim to that $5,000 reward money. All right. I'll get the boys together and we'll see if we can nail them. Well, that's my advice. You can take it or leave it. I'm trying to help you and help myself at the same time. He's right, Craig. How do I know that you're not after this payroll? Just wait till Tonto and I have gone before you do anything. Then no one but you and Miss Borden will know where the money really is. Well, I suppose I... Come on out, cover your hair, sir. That's the sheriff. They're after you. Is there a back door to this place? Right back there. It sounds like there's a posse. Maybe he has the place surrounded. We'll have to run for it. Come on, Tonto. Uh -huh. Good luck. Thanks. We'll need it. Let's go, Tonto. There they go, sheriff. Running out the back. Get the horses, Tonto, and head north. I don't know that part of the country, but we'll have to take a chance. Uh -huh. Come on, Silver. Come up, stop. They're heading north toward Boxwood Canyon. Keep after us. Hi, old Silver. Hi. In their haste, and because they were unfamiliar with all the trails around Placerville, the Lone Ranger and Tonto headed straight for Boxwood Canyon. It was an unfortunate choice. Boxwood Canyon was deceptive. Cut diagonally by some freak of nature, its entrance was overgrown with thick clumps of aspen and scrub pine. However, once the entrance was passed, all vegetation disappeared from steep slopes of granite and volcanic rock. The end of the canyon was a blind pocket with vertical stone walls that reached hundreds of feet into the air. Ranchers and mountain sheepmen oftentimes used Box Canyon as a trap to round up their stray livestock. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were unaware of these facts. They were riding for their lives and thought the trail would lead them through the range and away from danger. Within a few moments, they reached the end of the pocket and realized they were trapped. Oh, sir, oh, 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 Scott, oh, fella. It's a pocket, Tonto. There's no way out. Ah, uh, me not know that. Neither did I. But here we are, and that posse will be here in just a minute. Tonto, there must be some way out of here. Uh, me look. Uh, not fine trail. There must be 30 or 40 men in that posse. Ah. There was only some scrub pine or mesquite growing on the wall of this cliff. Oh, cliff all stone, plenty steep. We not climb it. We couldn't make it now anyway. They're coming in too fast. And what we do? I don't know, Tonto. How high do you think this wall is? Cliff, maybe two, three hundred feet. Well, we can't fly. We're trapped, Tonto. It looks like there's no way out. <laughs> curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. As Sheriff Pendleton's posse, composed of at least 30 men with guns and rifles, moved steadily through the underbrush toward the canyon's dead end, the Lone Ranger spoke quietly to Tonto. Just one chance, Tonto. One chance in a million. Oh, me not savvy. Quick, help me with my disguise. Oh, me help. You'll have to bear the brunt of this, but it may work. Uh -huh. Working rapidly because every second counted, the Lone Ranger removed his mask and changed his clothes. While he did this, Tonto altered his friend's face by staining it with certain herbs and berries. A few moments later, as if by magic, the Lone Ranger had disappeared, and in its place stood a rangy cowpuncher of ordinary appearance. Uh, 
Yeah. Well, that fixes it. I hate to make you take all the responsibility, Tonto, but no, I can't. It better way. You go, me wait. I'll wait behind a clump of pines so some of them pass me. Within the next few minutes, Sam Pendleton, the sheriff, closed the jaws of his posse man trap on the two fugitives he thought were caught at the end of the blind end of Boxwood Canyon. The Lone Ranger waited until some of the men were almost abreast of where he was hiding. Then he joined them silently. In the darkness, no one noticed there was an extra man in the front line of the posse. There's the engine man. The other hombre's around somewhere. All right, Redskin, reach. Uh, Tommy, have my hands up high. Where's your partner? Huh? Well, where is he? The tall goat with the mask. Well, me and... Well, speak up, Redskin, or no, I'll no, make no, it. No, no, no. You can't get anything out of an engine that way. Where, where is he? Where's your partner? Oh, me not savvy. Well, here's his horse. He's got to be here someplace. Well, he's not. I hate to admit it, but I'm afraid that masked critter's outsmarted us. It ain't possible. There's no way a human can get out of here unless... Hey, Sheriff, look at this. Yeah, what is it? In the saddlebag on this white stallion. There's some clothes and a black mask. It means... I know what it means. The masked man has ducked his layout and he's here among us someplace. All right, line up, all of you. I want to see if there are any strangers in this crowd. Line up now. Throw a lantern over this way. Hmm. Can't see anybody I don't know except. Hey, what's your name? A pool. Harvey Pool. I work on the drift gang up at the mine. I never saw you before, but you might be telling the truth. Step out here. Slim, Jeb, Charlie, Callahan. Hey, who are you? I'm a stranger in town. I saw you make up the posse, so I just came along. Well, that might be true. Step out here. Have you seen no? Well, there are only two men here that I don't know personally. Uh, how are you going to test them, Sheriff? Easy. I'll use this white horse, the one that belongs to the masked man. Hey, bring him over here. The horse doesn't lie. I want both you hombres to climb on this critter one at a time. What'll that prove? As fine a piece of horse flesh as this stallion won't like any strangers getting on him. You'll give us the answer. All right, you. Straddle this horse. All right. Come here, horse. Ready? Hey. Buck, Silver. Buck. Him long to make him mind about you. <laughs> I guess you're not the hombre we're looking for. I never got thrown so fast in my life. All right, Mr. Poole, you're next. Climb on. Steady, Silver. Steady, boy. <coughs> I never saw this horse before. I don't. I steady as a rock, Sheriff. He's our man. Hey, this ain't fair. His varmint's all played out. I'd never. Horses seen don't him. lie, Poole. He recognizes you without your mask. You're under arrest. We got what we come after, boys. Straddle your Bronx and let's go back to town. I can't understand it there. The sheriff's got Harvey Poole in jail. Thinks he's the masked man. Well, he is in a way. Poole's done quite a few jobs around here lately wearing a black mask. I know, but he's not the real masked man. I saw the real one today on the trail. It must have been him. And you saw him tonight over at the mine office. He said you did. That wasn't Poole. Maybe. Well, what do you mean? You know as well as I do. Maybe. I said maybe, Fletcher. But how can you... Oh, I get it. You double-cross Poole. He's in jail, so he can't squawk. You collect the 5,000 reward money, and then and we... And we crack the payroll save. Just the two of us. There's more when you split two ways, Fletcher. Lots more. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Well, how about it? Are you with me? Try and cut me out. Good. We'll lift that iron box in that mine office tomorrow night. Uh, the combination. We couldn't get it from the girl or the kid. Won't need a combination. We'll blow it. You stick close to me, Fletcher, and we'll both be rich. <laughs> The following afternoon, the Lone Ranger, still in disguise, visited Tonto in the local jail. I've done some investigating, Tonto. Uh -huh. I think Poole will try to make a break tonight. If he does, you go out with him. Uh -huh. I'll be waiting for you right back at the mine office. You understand? Uh -huh. Me happy. Good. I'll see you later. The Lone Ranger waited until sundown. Then he went to the livery stable and saddled Silver. A few moments later, he stopped at the edge of town, removed his disguise, and replaced his mask. 
His next stop was at the rear door of the office of the Eagle Mining Syndicate. Come in. The masked man. Where did you... Uh, never mind that now. Where's Lucy? She'll be here any minute. Good. Now, I'm sure that if we all work together, we can trap the men who intend to rob your safe and also discover who's been impersonating me. How can we? Lucy knows Sam Pendleton's wife. Yes? Now, someplace at home, the sheriff has duplicate keys to every cell in the jail. It's up to Lucy to visit Mrs. Pendleton and to get those keys. Well, that wouldn't be hard to do. But why? Then when the sheriff goes home to supper tonight, Lucy can go to the jail and release the prisoners, Harvey Poole and the Indian. Release the... Oh, no, Lucy couldn't do that. Now, listen, Craig. Harvey Poole is one of the men who tried to kidnap Lucy. He's also one of the men who intend to rob your safe. If he gets out of jail, he'll try the robbery tonight. We'll be waiting for him. Now, do you see what I mean? Yes, but... I'm trying to help you, and this is the only way it can be done. All right. Lucy and I will do everything we can. Good. I'll be waiting for you. Ranger waited for almost two hours in the shadows back of the mine company office before he heard Tonto's call. Tonto? Uh-uh. Me here. Miss Borden must have kept her promise. That's right. After Sheriff go home, girl come to jail. She bring keys open door. Did Poole get out? Uh-uh. Him go plenty fast. That's good. Now we'll go inside and wait with Lucy and Craig. Four people didn't have to wait long. In less than 30 minutes after they took up their vigil in the darkened office, they heard a key turn in the lock. Ain't there any way to get a light? Wait a minute. I know where the lamp is. There. Bring it over here by the safe. This will be easy. Yeah. This old iron box won't give us any trouble. But I will. Put up your hands. What the best man? Why, Craig, it's Mr. Thayer. I'm as surprised as you are, Lucy. I'm just a little disappointed. I expected something else. Did you know that Thayer was... Reach! All of you. It's Harvey. Cool. Back of us. Drop the hardware and get your hands up. I'll plug the first one that moves. Hey, I... Drop that gun. Now, listen, Poole, I can explain... I mean you too, you double-crossing sidewinder. Oh, Craig... Shut up. You, with a mask. Drop them. You have me covered from the back, pool, but I'm going to keep my guns. Either drop them, or I plug you. Duck, Tondo. I'll shoot out the light. Huh. All right, you ask for it. Plug the floor, Tondo. Huh. You plug the light, huh? Well, I'll show... Where are you? Where are you? My gun. I'll get... No, you won't. Oh! oh. That's for you, Fletcher. There's plenty of lead for all of you, and these two guns are mine. I'll cut you down one by one. You gotta move sometime. And I got all night to wait. With nervous fingers tense on the triggers of his two guns, Harvey Poole tried to pierce the inky blackness of the room, but no sound came to his ears. Apparently, everyone but the outlaw gunman was frozen with the silence of fear. Naturally, Poole couldn't see the Lone Ranger's fingers as they quietly pressed Tonto's shoulder. Nor could he know that they conveyed a message to the Indian lying prone on the floor. Softly and with the silence of an unseen shadow, Tonto raised himself to a crouching position. And then, with the same soundless movement he used in stalking a wild animal, the Indian crept slowly across the darkened room. Harvey Poole, staring intently into the blackness, had no way of knowing that the tick of a watch in his pocket betrayed his position in the dark as clearly as though he'd shouted at the top of his voice. He merely stared harder and nervously fingered his guns. Pretty soon one of you is going to move. And when you do, I... Me get you! Hey, what the... No, you can't! Oh. Oh, are you all right? Uh-huh. Light the lamp, Craig. Sure. My gun, I... No, you won't! Oh! How's Poole, Tonto? Is he conscious? Uh-huh. Uh, you dirty double-crossers. Every one of you crossed me. First, you have me thrown in jail for riding your horse. Then Thayer and Fletcher figure I'm out of the way, so they try to pull this job. And that girl lets me out of jail. I don't know why, and unless you had all this figured. Not all of it, Poole. But you supplied the missing parts. 
Here comes the sheriff. There's a posse with him. They must have heard the shooting. Here, Craig. You can keep there covered with his own gun. Turn him and Poole over to the sheriff. There's a murder charge against Poole. Well, sure I will. But where are you going? Out the back door. Todd and I have had one experience with the Placerville posse, and that's enough. But how will I explain? Well, you've seen and heard enough evidence to convict a dozen crooks like these. Come on, Toto. Ah, we'll have to hurry. About it's all over, Sheriff. These men tried to rob the safe. Harvey Poole, eh? It's Thayer. I've always been suspicious of that, hombre. Who's the dead one? Well, his name's Fletcher. Poole killed him. Hey, you've done a good job, Craig. Uh, it wasn't me. I didn't do anything. No, Craig, don't say anything. He wouldn't want you to. Who's he? We don't really know, Sheriff. But but it might have been the Lone Ranger. I'll just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>